Okay, so I was dealing with this tweet the other day by this atheist. And it said... If you believe your consciousness will exist, continue to exist after you die, you've not actually wrestled with your, the reality of your own mortality. And it was very popular. A lot of atheists liked it because they think that that's the, the real deal. Okay, now herein lies the problem with that tweet and that idea. If you think that's true, and a lot of atheists think that's true, that when you die, it's like it was before you were born. It's nothing. You, you have no consciousness whatsoever, and it's just like before you were born. There's no... The problem with that idea, that idea presents a conundrum. Now, your deeper atheists, your, your philosopher atheists from the past, recognized the problem with that idea. And they tried to solve it, but couldn't. Your modern-day atheists deal with the problem by pretending it doesn't exist. And the problem is this. That means, and I said this to him, that life is essentially meaningless and kind of evil. And I'm not even sure if he understood that that's the actual implication of that. But it is the implication of that. Think it through. If there's no... no if you, when you die, it's as if before you're born, you completely are out of existence, you have no consciousness whatsoever, then why not kill yourself tomorrow? That's one of the things that Camus struggled with. Why not? There would be really no answer to that. You would struggle to find an answer to be life-affirming, but your answer would be fake. Because there'd be no good reason why not. None. Whatsoever. Okay? So if you die and you then turn into nothing and you have no consciousness of having lived, just like before you were born, life is essentially meaningless. And there is nothing to stop you from taking your own life. Because there's no reason not to do it. And that idea is not liberating as some atheists pretend it is. It is horrifying. But ultimately, you struggle with the idea. And this is when I was younger and I was kind of an agnostic. I was never really an atheist. But I would read some of these things. And they would try to answer this question different ways. One of the, one of the, the deeper atheistic philosophers would try to answer the question. The more shallow ones, like your Richard Dawkins, pretend that, it, that there's no implication. Most of your modern day atheists pretend that what I just said isn't true. Or they paper it over. They ignore its reality. How they deal with death is very simple. They pretend it's not real to themselves. That's how most people deal with death. You shut out awareness of its inevitability, which is easy to do when you're under the age of 40. But once you get over the age of 40, it becomes literally harder and harder to do as time goes on. And death starts mocking your every step. Now, I'm over the age of 40. I'm 47-ish around there. And it got you get here much quicker than you realize. It's one of the things. You get here, 10 years go by quicker and quicker as you get older. And I'm starting to feel in my body its decay. And th that's only going to get more so. 10 years from now will go by quickly and I'll feel even more obvious that I'm going to die. Now the Christian is presented with the actual answer. Well, what happens to you, Mr. Christian, when you face the inevitability of your death? What do you feel? Joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. And that's the God's honest truth. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. What does the atheist feel when faced with the inevitability of his death? What is his solution? He shuts it out. Pretends that this world is a lot more valuable and meaningful than it actually is. That's one solution. But it doesn't really work. What's the other solution? Pretend that you don't care. But if you have nothing to take with you. This is part of why there's so few atheists. Nothing to bring you into the great beyond other than, you know, a big question. You can pretend that the thought of you dying doesn't fill you with dread and fear. But you're probably lying. You've made some sh or you haven't looked too deeply. That's what most of them actually do. They don't look too deeply. Richard Dawkins never addresses it and doesn't look that deeply. Camus looked deeply. And he had a very tragic sense of life. One of his big things was, you know... What's to stop you from killing himself? That was one of his big things he wrestled with. Why not kill yourself? And there's no answer for that if you're actually an atheist. There really isn't an answer for that. You aren't smarter than Camus. 
There's no way to answer that intellectually. If, if as you die is as it was before you were born, kill yourself tomorrow because life is ridiculous. It's a joke. Now, the reason why you wrestle with that idea is because deep down inside, you know that life is extraordinarily valuable. You know it deep in your heart. Deep, deep, deep in your heart, you have some awareness, and I had this before I was a Christian, that life is profound. That life is extraordinarily valuable, and even atheists recognize this. That it's terrible when somebody dies. Now, this is a very long subject, and I'm just getting started. So, I'm going to stop for now.